Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about industrial analytics. And I brought back the legend. So go back to episode 14, <laughs> Eco Ask Why. Intelligent Motor Control Centers. That is one of the most downloaded episodes we've ever had. Only behind one lines, but I tell you what, Matt is every week he's getting closer and closer to eclipsing that one. So we're excited <laughs> to have you back, Matt. You know, Matt Hussey, the industrial digital sales manager at Eaton. So what's going on, Matt? How you doing today, buddy? Good. How's it going, Chris? Good to be back. Uh, yeah. We'll keep chipping away. See if we can't uh, take on that top spot soon enough. <laughs> oh, you, you're, you're, you're getting there. You're getting there for sure. You know, and, and since we recorded last time, you know, we added this whole video component. We, we, we got a new studio we're working with. So you, you're seeing the latest and greatest Rico asked why wow answers, but you, yeah. you were there at the beginning, my friend. That, that's what it, that was all about. <laughs> No, it's awesome to see you guys grow. I, I certainly uh, tune in every week. Uh, we were just talking about it, you know, seeing some of your latest uh, iterations and some of the other Eaton team members. Is, you guys have done an awesome job. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. And I'll tell you what. So set the stage for our listeners. Matt and I, we were in a meeting a few months ago, and, and he was mm -hmm. going through some some things he's doing with his new role and he had an awesome slide deck and he pulled up a slide and it talked about the four levels of industrial analytics complexity and value and for those that are that are listening only to eco s y uh, click over to the youtube channel watch this one because you'll be able to see that slide pop up but you'll see what we're, we're referring to and that'll be a good uh, reference point for you as we go forward but when matt pulled up that slide we, we we got stuck. It was hard for us to get past that slide because it was so much there to unpack. And I was like, man, we, we just need to hit record and, and talk about this thing. So, you know, maybe, Matt, for the listeners, the ones that haven't got to YouTube yet, we know they're going to get there. Set the stage for them. What are those four levels of industrial analytics that, that, you, were, that you were showing us there that day? Yeah, I, I think, Chris, if, if I remember correctly, I mean, we were I, where we kind of got into it. We were talking about you know, really just how we're making uh, as an industry, this digital transformation, the journey that we're on, connecting devices and things like that. Um, and I think one of the topics we, we weaved in on is, you know, how do we get to a state where we start to leverage some of the more prescriptive type, you know, uh, algorithms and, and really having our equipment and assets kind of tell us you know, what can be done to prevent something from failing. And I think one of the, the roadblocks we got into is like, well, that's very aspirational in nature. Uh, how do you get there? And and I think what it dawned on us was the realization that, you know, throughout that process, there's a series of iterations that you're going to undergo and uh, really evolve from something that we might early say, let's, let's focus on you know, some of the analytics on telling us what happened. Uh, and then we might progress into things like why did it happen? And then then we'll future kind of start to look at what will happen after these sort of patterns have developed before, you know, we get into that more prescriptive type, you know, if you don't do this by this point, you know, let's, let's take some action here now. And um, I think it really distilled it down uh, for me at least to, to recognize, you know, some of the basic things that I think we overcomplicate things on that um, that that migration, right? Right. I think we all envision that like last step that we're going to undertake, and, it, and and I think it's very ambitious to get there. But realizing some of the precursors that have to occur, you know, as you're going on that journey. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think that in in the beginning of the journey, as you, as you mentioned, you know, what happened, and I think sometimes. You know, we really just take that for granted, but that's a pit, that's a big analysis in itself, right? To diagnose really descriptively what sure. actually happened so that you can move forward. Yeah. And, and, and a good way to look at this too, right? It, it's, um, you know, we're now connecting more devices, uh, more than ever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they, they all have the capability of, you know, generating so much information from them, um, and it's important to kind of figure out with all this information, what is important. And, and from day to day, that might be different. But I think as we're, we're realizing the benefits of those smart assets, those devices, the, the capability of just being able to compile and describe over time, mm -hmm. 
uh, those key uh, attributes that tell us, you know, hey, I, I know this machine's been running for, for this long. If something happened, what's it been its history? And really describing, you know, when you might not be there, what, what sort of occurrences, what's the kind of history uh, of that asset? Right, right. No doubt. I mean, so and let's just to reset the stage a little bit for our listeners out there. So while Matt's talking about what happened, that's the, that's the descriptive analysis. So that that's where we that's where it, kind of where it all begins. It's, you know, not a lot of value there, not a lot of complexity, but you do need to get that what. And then we move to the diagnostic. Right. And that's where we're looking at a little mm-hmm. bit more of why it happened. And, you know, Matt, as you see people move from descriptive to diagnostics, you know, what are some use cases, you know, maybe paint the picture for the guy that's out there thinking like right now, you know, what, are, <laughs> what is he talking about from going it from, from descriptive to diagnostic? Yeah. So I, I would look at it from, from, from say this angle. So, so we'll use a classic use case. Um, so we want to monitor a current from, you know, a piece of switch gear or what have you, you know, I might first start looking at, how various feeders and, and machines downstream that are fed from that switch gear have been operating. And I'll first begin to tell over time how those loads are coming on and off. Um, but then all of a sudden I see during a, a one day I see a process trip and it might be related to uh, a circuit breaker opening. Uh, you want to be able to go back and look and describe you know, what led up to that, but then also be able to diagnose, hey, I, I realized that I was utilizing, uh, you know, too much current or, or operating the process, you know, very uh, rigorously that it caused something to act activate. Mm-hmm. And so that's where like some of that long term trending and being able to see that data over longer periods of time, you can start to build out those sort of you know, thresholds of what's considered acceptable, right? You're, you're not mm-hmm. only describing, you know, oh, that's why it happened because I see where I exceeded that limit, but then I'm also b- being able to kind of build into those, uh, you know, boundary limits, which I think starts to kind of build into what we start seeing as, you know, that predictive step, right? Right, right. And I think a lot of times that people, they really want to maybe not skip it, but almost just not take as much time because they really want to get to the predictive, you know, and back in my reliability yeah. days, you know, I spent a lot of time in the predictive area trying to talk with a lot of end users about that. Now I was talking more on the, the motor condition analysis and vibration and things like that, but the same thing could be true for power or whatever automation systems. We're all trying to get to, you know, that predictive yeah. area. So, you know, where are you seeing the biggest impact here on the plant floor? Um, I, I think the biggest wave that I see is really, it's kind of twofold, right? Some of these things that we're talking about in terms of an analytical journey that, you know, they've existed for, for many years, right? These are the sort of things that you even see in the, the healthcare, the medicine industry, right? This is all part of the data science that exists there. Um, you know, even in the automation space, is there things that we use to operate the process, right? Um the, the biggest thing I see is how much of this sort of methodology is now being tapped into for other team members that have historically not been able to get into this type of information journey. Right. Right. Um, and so it becomes an accessibility benefit that we're now living in where, you know, not only am I empowering the the process engineers, the amount of information they need to know in, in terms of setting those key performance indicators for process, uh, but but also I'm enabling to give maybe the same data or maybe a different set of data, you know, to to other operators and maintenance teams and allow them to bring their skill set, their expertise and, and go down this analytical journey. Because, you know, we're all going to react to some sort of downtime event that is unplanned or or need to get a little bit more out of our system. And we're. But I think everybody recognizes everybody comes into it with a different, you know, skill set of 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 attributes and expertise that, you know, for one, it might be, you know, I know how we can get a little bit more out of the machine, you know, this way. Right. You have that other individual is like, yeah, you can, but here's what's going to be the trade off. And so we can make more, you know, informed decisions as we're giving and empowering, you know, these various teams to kind of build out their own analytical insights with the intel on, on how these equipment are, are performing. Right. Right. 
Because I mean, the data. It, there's so much data these days, right? I mean, and and it's it's fl- yeah. it's flying at us. You know, and I was thinking about just prepping to sit down and talk with you, and and I thought about my just my personal LinkedIn feed, and I mean, it, it's it's out there. <laughs> I mean, like I could yeah. I could go right now and and update my feed and scroll through and find somebody talking about a you know a a prescriptive analysis tool, and and how mm-hmm. how great it is. But I'm I'm not getting a lot of times the the real meat, the data points. Like give me the the, the, right. the case points. So, you know, as you see more and more people trying to get to that prescriptive, you know, where where, where they're trying to get there, yeah. you know, what is something that maybe some areas of low hanging fruit or, or areas that you see really making an impact out there right now that from from an industrial that could really lean into. Yeah, I, I think, you know, as you mentioned, as you were you know, talking about the prescriptive, I think one of the key, you know, entrance points is we first had to have gone on this journey with some sort of, uh, you know, problem statement in hand, right? Okay. Um, you know, rooting that uh, journey into that, uh, you know, one of the, the areas that uh, some of the industrials are embarking on, you might uh, be involved on it. I, I think, um, you know, the, the topic of... Um, thermography and electrical equipment. Uh, mm-hmm. Take that as an example. You know, we're, we're all looking at electrical reliability and our, and our equipment for uh, needing to make sure that that equipment is, is operating well and it's not establishing a loose connection. I don't know if you, your, your team has gotten involved, but, you know, you do those IR audits where you're bringing in a, you know, thermal imaging gun, somebody, uh, you know, plans a, an area of preventative maintenance, you know, for an electrical room. Have you guys uh, participated in any of we that? Used to, we used to, our motor repair, we used to do, you know, that type of service. Yeah. You know, so that we had an IR gun and it made it really nice when, <laughs> when the switch gear had the little windows, it makes it really nice. But yeah. Not all switch gear has windows. So sometimes you have to actually open right. it up, you're exposed, you need to make sure you have the right PPE. So yeah, I'm very familiar with that. So uh, again, to build on that, right? We 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 recognize like there's a lot of value that we're uh, bringing by doing those things. But as you know, it's a you know it's a pretty intensive process to do that. You've got to you know have the people in place coordinating, capturing that, recording at any of the measurements and things like that. Um, the other thing is is those are you know really a, a snapshot in time, right? right. And right it might be representative of that that one time period, but you're really not getting a view on the longevity on, on how stressed that equipment has been. And so more recently, there's been a lot of uh, movement in the ability to deploy sensors to enable, you know, this continuous monitoring of connections, uh, obviously vibration and, and others can kind of go off of that same sort of tangent. Mm-hmm. Then the problem that we start to find ourselves, and this is where I go back to some of that descriptive benefit is, okay, now when I start to think about uh, placing these various uh, sensors, temperature in this case, um, how many electrical connections uh, could I potentially have in a piece of uh, uh, switch gear, let alone an electrical room, yeah. right? Uh, there, there's so many out there. And so granted, it's great. I'm going to have these sort of sensors embedded to give me that uh, early indication of something going awry. Um, I really need to think about, well, when do I really want to react to this? There, there's a benefit of sure being able to kind of go up and query the equipment. Maybe I've got a little localized interface, but I really only want to be bothered by that when, when there's something that's gone out of a tolerance or a threshold. And so, I mean, a, a classic example, you get a motor control center, uh, that's operating a you know a paper machine or or a series of uh, you know pumps for for a water treatment facility. You could be dealing with uh, hundreds of hundreds of starters and drives, and so it becomes a data uh, mine mine effort of sifting through it to kind of find where's the problem spot. Right. And so this is where we kind of go back and like, well, how do we build? you know, the sort of application, the the insights to really describe what's going on, to bring that pertinent data to life, really just bring forward the ones that are problem spots so I can take action on them and don't bother me with the ones that are, you know, somewhat already operating fine, we're, we're good, we don't need to focus. So that way I can be more efficient with my time. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, just think, I think about that as like your notifications, you know, when, when you get, yeah. you really don't want to be bothered by your phone or your, 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 yep. your Apple watch, unless something's going on and, and, and you feel like you yep. need to, to be aware of that and make a, and, and, you know, make a decision. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do yeah. with the industrials is trying to figure out, get them to the point where they can make a decision proactively. But that data, yeah. I mean, the data now with the IIoT devices, man, it, it's, it's growing. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's opening some eyes, you know, because, you know, you know, we're, we're manufacturers of equipment, right? right. Um, you know, we, we go and, uh, and take our equipment. We do stress tests on it all day long, as far as, you know, validating how it's going to do against the upper thresholds of, you know, short circuits and temperature rise and all that. But they're, the great irony in it all is these products are designed for all these sort of worst case scenarios, but you know, they're deployed in so many different locations, so many different situations. And that in the end of the day, you know, the visibility on how that equipment, uh, what sort of uh, conditions it's been presented with and fatiguing that might occur, you know, there's a great gap there. And so how do we bridge that gap? So, that we can get a better sense on, you know, the sort of environments this equipment has been uh, installed in. And it might not even be, you know, that extreme. Like you, you see some things with electrical rooms where, you know, you start to realize how much the equipment, you know, even with, you know, a well-conditioned uh, room and, and what have you, uh, there's still subtleties that occur in all of it. Um, and, and, uh, you know, the, the environment that it, it exists in, there's definitely ways that we can identify, you know, what sort of uh, attributes start to contribute to an accelerated wear on those types of equipment. Certainly not, you know, to a complete prescriptive basis, but, you know, some of these patterns start to surface. Right, right. So for the industrial end user, Matt, when you're thinking about mm -hmm. going that, from that predictive to prescriptive, you know, sometimes that, that can be a pretty big jump you know, to, to make that yeah. leap with, with the, with, the, particularly with the, the, the realm of IOT devices that are out there, you know, are there any headwinds or is there anything that, that we should keep in mind that you'd like to offer up for as advice for the, for the listener? Okay. Here, here's some good ways to start and maybe prove test, you know, and, and get some data working for you to make decisions, you know, as you move forward versus trying to eat this whole elephant at once. Right. Yeah. Um, Totally. Uh, you know, we, we really encourage a lot on, you know, finding those kind of pilot opportunities and, you know, navigating to those points where, you know, you can celebrate those quick wins. Mm -hmm. um, some of that it might even just be how do you, you know, center in around a particular substation. We recognize, you know, the, that incoming utility supply, um, while it might not... <laughs> be one that we think about as failing very frequently. Uh, but when it does, you know, we're, we're really in a pinch. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so being able to embed those solutions, I think, I think a lot about, um, you know, these existing sites, you know, we, we're all thinking uh, long term and with new installations, it's, you know, easy to ingest new technology. But I think we also have to keep an eye out for the modernization efforts. If we're going to be doing a you know, maintenance on the equipment, how do we take that as an opportunity to embed some uh, monitoring of that digital uh, uh, current, whether it be a meter yeah. or a trip unit or things like that. Um, so you don't want to just replace really like can... for like? I mean, come on, man. That's, that's the way the world works, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are the simple little things while you're in it, you're already, uh, you know, you know, paying for that type of uh, modernization, refurbishment, or, or things like that, you might as well take the opportunity to see if you can't add something that's going to get you a little bit more insight into performance of that equipment, especially if it's, you know, one that's probably gotten, you know, 20, 30 years of life on it. You might as well be seeing a little bit more data from that one. So you're, you're getting some early signs of when that uh, piece of equipment's uh, you know, starting to head on its way out. So, so, we, so I'm speaking to Mr. Maintenance Manager right now. Well, I'm gonna let you speak. I'm gonna let you speak to him. I got him in my mind. I know what this. I know what they look like. <laughs> I can see the frown on their face, and all I can see is this guy or girl, and 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 they're just thinking, this just just sounds like more work for me, and something else is going to break. You know, what, what do you say to that person? 
I, I think uh, I, I would say it's it's surprising how how simple and easy these installations can be. And, and like I said, for many years now, you know, even the simplest little meter has as a means of communicating the information for it. I, I think the hard part is sometimes it's been kind of viewed that I'm going to be coming out there and, and burdening somebody with an application that they're going to have to have a certain expertise, a login or something like that. Where, where many times it could be as simple as an application that they can you know, glance at their phone on to, to be able to see what's going on. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, it, to, to align with that, that maintenance manager, I, I would go back and say, well, you know, in the past year or so, what's been the things that have really kind of kept you up at night as far as an issue? And how do we focus on solving those problems so you don't have to worry about it when you leave you know, for home to be with your family or whatnot. And, you know, it's get, it's got to prove valuable to, to that type of uh, individual yeah. so that they can adopt it, right? It's not a matter of just forcing the technology outward. I, I think we really try to do a lot to focus in around their, the problems that, that keep them up and, and start there. Yeah. Um, because then it, it it's naturally, uh, you know, something that, you know, somebody's going to want to leverage at that point. Well, it's an emotional tie there too. I mean, I think we mm -hmm. try to keep emotion out of work and I was talking to somebody the other day and that's the most ridiculous thing we can do. Like we're emotional people. Yeah. We're, that's, that's, that's who we are. And, and so if you can tap into that, you know, and actually sh show some benefit there and, you know, let them understand, Hey, you know, when you go home, you should be able to go home and not worry about your equipment because your equipment is, yeah. it has the diagnostics to, to make sure, you know, if something's happening, it's going to alert whoever needs to be alerted. And the problems will get taken care yeah. of, right? So I mean, that's, one that's of our uh, one of our often recited or classic examples that we uh, went through on this. This was, you know, last year a little bit, and uh, you know, there's an industrial site that um, you know had this concern around some of the aging equipment uh, that was installed, and you know, just hey, you know, we're doing some modernization, doing some breaker maintenance and whatnot, and uh, you know, hey. What, what can we do to kind of install some, I'm worried about the room here. It gets pretty, uh, it's, it's not well taken care of. It's kind of subject to the environment and everything. It's like, okay, well, let's just put some, you know, humidity and, and temperature sensing uh, type application in. And we'll just track that over time, see how it goes. If, you know, it's not a problem, we can let you know how it goes. And um, sure enough, like, uh, you know, several months elapsed, everything's been going fine, but all of a sudden, one point the the humidity reading starts going off the charts and it's crazy right it's like this doesn't make sense and so the, the electrician finally goes into the the room there and it's kind of downstairs where the uh, you know incoming switch gear was and there he looks inside and he sees there's been a, at least an accumulation of like 4 or 6 inches of water in the room oh and my gracious this was something he's like it has no idea that this was going on and it turns out like the elevation where it is in the landscape there is um you know right in kind of like where the water table is and it was accumulating had no idea that this was going on and clearly it never got to a level where it was approaching the energized bus or the conductors and whatnot and it, it just became this proof point of like holy crap I, I really don't see what's going on in that room every single time and even if it is something that you know, never really surface as a problem. You, you never know what sort of, uh, you know, stressors your equipment's facing on a day in and day out basis when you get things like that. I mean, we've seen, you know, I'm sure everybody's got those uh, stories around, you know, rodents or animals getting into the equipment. It's, it's a nice, cozy, warm environment, unfortunately. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that when you're not there, how, how is that you know, pristine environment that we think is there really, you know, uh, yeah being perceived on a daily basis so no doubt i mean you think about most electrical rooms in industrial facilities i mean most of them are you know uh keyed entry only you know authorized personnel which mm -hmm. are all these great reasons right but that's also leads yeah. to your point they're really not that highly trafficked you know you just don't see people yeah. walking through them a lot so you know with something like a like like that happens from, from an environment standpoint you know the sensor, at least we know was doing his job. It was telling, you know, yeah. and like you said, that was, a, 
Yeah, that was a, you know, a piece of equipment that, you know, had been running, no, no signs of wear. Obviously, you're not going to see that. And as you're monitoring, you know, the power the breakers and everything looks like it's OK. But here there's a completely different story being told right. uh, for that piece of equipment. Um, and, and you might not even see it. That, that wire goes in, comes, accumulates, goes away. You might see a stain or something like that. But yeah. be none the wiser with no, none of that in front of you. And, and that speaks to the, to the value of continuous data and that, that stream mm-hmm. and, uh, and analytics that you're talking about from a, a prescriptive standpoint, you know, and that's yeah. the beauty of the IIOT and what's, what's changing in right. the industrial world now, because you have that, because I mean, to your point, when we were talking earlier about the thermal camera, you're right. That's a snapshot right then that moment. Yep. Do you have a problem? Yes or no. But, you know, you could leave the next week something happened and you may not get back around for that route for another quarter. You know, yeah. if you have three months of, of really damaging uh, heat and you know degradation of insulation, things like that, that could be just taking the life cycle down on that equipment. So that's a powerful story there on the power of, yeah. of, of continuous monitoring and how you can use the analytics. And, and also to think about it too, the, the other key variable that we get with all these in analytics is a timestamp, right? Uh, and and a, an ability to to store and re- hold on to that over long periods of time. And so when you start to see those different behaviors, maybe it's a, a difference of a day in the week that that you know you know we put more load on the system or over a month, you know, the seasonality of, yeah. of, a, of the year for, for our, our business, we have different goals and, you know, how real, how close to those sort of, uh, you know, upper limits, we all design these systems based off of that load. And we, we tune up that, um, you know, the circuit protection and everything on that for a certain designed in amount of uh, capacity, you know, how how close are we getting to that? Or is there some unbalance that we're causing as we're trying to get more throughput in parts of the plant versus another? Um, These are only sorts of questions you can start to answer once you, again, begin to accumulate that type of data, bring it into the annals of of, of historians and and be able to make those types of informed decisions to really see, you know, how it's been uh, utilized over that time. No doubt. No, absolutely. So now our maintenance manager, we were talking, we were talking about earlier, Matt, he's not frowning anymore. He's got a little smile on his face. <laughs> he's, he, he's starting to lighten yep. up a little bit, but so let's give him, let's mm-hmm. give him a, a good piece of advice as we get towards the end of our, of our discussion here. What's, what, what advice would you give him right now, him or her to, to start that journey to, to really start working towards what you just described? Yeah. Great uh, question. Um, you know, I, I would say to them, uh, you know, this this technology is only going to go as far as 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 any uh, amount of problem solving is, is that we're trying to do. I, I think the effort of all this technology can be you know, really uh, proved out with, uh, you know, how, how useful it's going to be. You know, we have to be enablers for, for you on 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 some of the solutions that we're providing. And so. Um, you know, look for those quick wins, try, try to take on those, uh, you know, small problem spots that just continually you find yourself having to deal with those issues and, and, and almost to a point where it feels like, you know, this has always kind of been like this, this is that. Yeah. Um, and really kind of start there. Um, I, I think there's a benefit that I've seen too is how small and focused of a solution you can focus in on without really trying to, you know, boil the ocean. You're not going to turn it overnight, but if you start, you know, some, some small area focus in on solving that problem, I think in the long run, it's going to be a very additive effect on it. I think that's great advice. And I, and, and I know the eco as wild listeners, they get tired of hearing me say this, but I go back to what, what one of our guests and she, when she said it, it stuck with me think big, act small, you know, so you definitely have those (laughs) big ambitions where you're trying to go, but get those small incremental wins to get going to, you know, that builds your confidence up, you know, as, as a, as a group as well, you're going to get some internal advocates. And next thing you know, that snowball is picking up momentum and then you, then you can really start moving the needle. So uh, that's great advice, Matt. So uh, you're, you're, like I said, an eco ass why 
you know, legend here. So, you know, we end up, we, we end up with the, with the why. So maybe speak to the listener out there, you know, why is embracing industrial analytics such an important factor as industry competes for profitability and growth in the future? For sure. Yeah. It, it's, uh, one of the things I'm, I'm most passionate about in my current role is, um, you know, it's, it's kind of put, you know, products and, and features, you know, almost to the backstage. And it really starts, like you said, you, you get indoctrinated into what are the real problems of, you know, mm-hmm. facilities are fa- facing and how do you bring the right sort of solution to, to make that uh, a realization? I, I think for me, the, that analytical journey not only um, enables the end user and, and the maintenance manager to have some peace in mind. I think it also helps from a manufacturer standpoint, a better familiarity on how the equipment is being used and also you know, what sort of improvements and features can be designed in that regard. So mm-hmm. I think you know, I look at this analytical journey as really collaborative. Um, you know, it gives an opportunity for manufacturers to kind of work together uh, in, in realizing the solutions that that enable, um, you know, companies to, to take their their next step. But, I, but I, I also find that, you know, it gives an opportunity for end companies themselves to you know, realize, uh, you know, their goals, you know, make sure everybody can <laughs> sleep with a little bit of peace of mind uh, in the end of the day, too. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I love that answer. You know what, Matt, this has been fun. What, what else did we miss? Anything else that you'd like to, to unpack here before we wrap up? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, we, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, you know, what sort of uh, analytical problems have you guys been running into lately? It, you know, it, it, it runs, it varies on which industrials you talk to. You know, a lot of them are looking mm-hmm. more at the, you know, the power analytics for sure. Uh, we still have some yeah. people that are trying to do, you know, come to us and, and for consulting around, you know, motor diagnostics and vibration. And, and yeah. there's, there's some online systems now that really work. Uh, that, that are really, mm-hmm. you know, evolving, changing the game. So it's not just, you know, one or two bands. Now you can actually get some more impactful data. So uh, I'm excited to see where it goes, you know, with, with the advancement of technology and as easy as some of this stuff is to implement, um, it can really have a big impact in the future. Yeah. We've, we've all been uh, carrying around these, uh, <laughs> you know, cellular devices in our pockets for, for many years now. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just a steady stream of, of information and um, quite accustomed to being able to glance at that and see anything that we want to see, whether it's our latest, uh, you know, sports team, what how, how things are going there. I, it, it's it's really given us the ability to even think about how we might, you know, apply that tool in, in an industrial environment as right. well. Right. Well, Matt, I'm going to slip in one question that normally is on the hero stuff, but you know, since you've already had your hero stuff, go get listeners, go out there, check it out. You know, you'll find Matt Hussey's hero episode. <laughs> now, if I remember you are a, 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 a connoisseur of the old fashioned. So it, it, oh, any, yeah. <laughs> any, any more tips? Have you, have you got it any better? Any tips to make that old fashioned even better? Cause I, I want to come over and talk industrial analytics so long as you make the old fashioned. <laughs> You know, I you know, I guess one of the things I've been thinking around with lately, um, I still got my tried and true favorite uh, old fashioned recipe, um, but I've been working with. There's some different styles of old fashions that are out there. Um, certainly not only in the you know the end of uh, ingredients that are added, but also in the techniques. And so, you know, I've been playing around with a few different ones there. I, I find that I still come back to it. One of the other uh, recent ones is uh i don't know that it would be considered an old-fashioned but just a, a straight uh bourbon ice cube and an orange twist has been another uh good uh addition to the repertoire as well uh keep it kind simple. of a pickup uh, yeah so no it's been it's been good certainly get to a chance I, I love entertaining uh you know people as a home bartender so uh for sure if you're ever in the neighborhood let us know we'll We'll, we'll stir something up for you. <laughs> we, that sounds like an invitation. We'll make that happen, my friend. But no, this has been a <laughs> lot of fun. I, I had to bring that that back up. But, you know, for the <laughs> listeners out there that want to connect with Matt and the wonderful things he's doing at Eaton, check out the show notes. You'll be able to find out, 
you know, go, go directly to LinkedIn, everything he's doing there. You know, Matt, thank you again. This has been a lot of fun. We covered a lot of ground here, but I think it was a, some really good, impactful stuff that can help our listeners get better. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Chris. All right, buddy. You have a great day. You too. Now, that was a fun conversation with Matt because when we start thinking about industrial analytics, you know, your mind goes all, all over the place. So when he really broke down that descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and then really working toward that prescriptive analysis that we all want to get towards. But you know what? You may not be there right now, and that's okay. Know where you're at and just start working up the ladder. And remember to think big and act small. So the war stories, they're coming in. They're all sorts of fun. Please share them. The good, the bad, the ugly, the, the comical. We want, to, we want the comical ones too. So go over to the show notes. Hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, all LinkedIn. We're all over the place. Get those submittals to us. You can even do a video, whatever's easiest for you. And we're going to keep getting those out to you. Now, if you're liking Eco Ask Why, share it. You know, send a text message, put an email. We have all sorts of ways that you can share Eco Ask Why with others. Because, you know, if you keep it in our pocket, it doesn't grow. And one way you can really help us grow, go give us a five-star rating. Write a, a review. It only takes 45 seconds to a minute. Really, a couple sentences about how this content is bringing you value really makes a big difference. So go up, give us that five-star rating, write that review, and remember to keep asking why.